Hello guys, welcome back to Geology Concepts. In this lecture, we will see types of sedimentary rocks, plastic sedimentary rocks. Okay, so let's get into it. First of all, we have conglomerate and breccias. Okay, they are also called diamectite, conglomerates and breccias. Conglomerates are rounded, breccias are angular. Okay. Now the classification is on the basis of gravel size, mud size and the sand. Okay. So you, as you can see in this triangle here, gravel, mud and sand are the three ends of this triangle. Okay. Now it can be, now all the conglomerates can be divided on this basis. Okay. So if you zoom into this triangle, we see here, yeah, right. So this region here will contain all the conglomerates, well sorted conglomerates and breccias. Hmm. Here they will be poorly sorted, not that well sorted conglomerates and breccia. Here it will be towards mud. Now see we are from here we are approaching towards increase in the amount of mud size sediments. So mud conglomerate or breccias. Here it will be sandy conglomerates then this will be pebbly mudstone this will be pebbly vacay vacay will come to it in a just a moment because sand sandstone are divided on vacay and arenites okay so they can be pebbly arenites if the matrix is uh, less than 10 percent if in the matrix there is 10 percent clay or less then it is called arenites and others is called vacay so as you move from here to here arenites and then vacay and then mudstone all right so this is the basis on which uh, conglomerates are classified next we have the sandstone this is a very important classification okay in sandstone first three things we need to understand that if there is less than 10 percent of clay matrix they are called as arenites okay arena is just a spanish word for sand so arenites comes from arena now feldspar rich sandstone is called arcos okay arcos lithic rich sandstone are called litharenites all right now if these three terms are clear now we can go into this diagram to understand it yeah now you see you see this is there is quartz there is feldspar and in this region yeah and in this region you have elithic fragments or rock fragments all right so and now you see this line here this line this line denotes 10 percent line and uh, the increase in the clay is in this side so as you go from left end to the right end the matrix clay matrix rich clay and fine silt increases okay so this is 10 percent line all right then there is 10% line here you see here this this 10% line this is for differentiating between litharinite and feldspathic litharinite okay then there is this arcos and lithic arcos and the top you see quartz here this is quartz arenite okay then there is sub arcos sub sub litharinite okay this side this this portion this shaded portion sub litharinite and lithic sub arcos here lying in the middle okay and this is how it, it is classified sandstone mineralogical maturity increases this side as we have already seen in the last lecture quartz is more mature than feldspar and rock fragment of course and also quartz is more stable textural mat maturity increases this side okay so grains are much 
bigger in size more rounded and more sorted as you go come here as you have seen in the table we discussed in the last lecture okay then we have you see this portion is called quartz vacay okay as we have seen there downward portion is called feldspathic so everything from here till here from 10% to 50% is called vacay and feldspathic vacay in this region lithic vacay and the top portion is quartz vacay okay vacay is also called argillaceous sandstone argillaceous just means presence of clay and silt okay so argillaceous sandstone or vacay vacay is the name given to this beyond this 50% everything is sandy mudstone like so we don't classify much in that region so main classification is from 0 to 10% this line then from 10 to 50% okay so i think we have understood all this part third is the before going to third we need to understand the Mineralogical composition. So we saw that there was quartz. Two third of the minerals found in sandstone is quartz. Okay, there are three reasons to it. First, it is one of the most abundant mineral in crystalline rock, like granitoid schist and gneisses. This is crystalline. Right. Then they are mechanically durable because there is no cleavage in quartz, as we know. So it doesn't tend to break. It is mechanically durable. Thirdly, it is chemically stable at earth surface. Okay, it is chemically stable, unlike feldspar. Okay, now feldspar contains about ten to fifteen percent of all sandstone is feldspar, and mostly they are in plagioclase and alkali feldspar form. Last is lithic fragments or the mineralogic uh, rock fragments. Apart from these three, quartz, feldspar, and lithic fragments. We have uh, accessory minerals. Okay, I will not be discussing, I am just mentioning it that uh, there are some other minerals called accessory minerals which can be can be used to distinguish one type of sandstone from other type. Okay. Next third is so first was conglomerate of brescia, second was sandstone, third is mud rocks. Okay. Now mud rock is basically beyond 50% siltstone silt size of fragments you know, in this triangular diagram beyond 50% it was shale clay size particle are there organic rich shales are source of petroleum okay and they are found in low energy environment because their size is very small the low energy environments like deep water ocean basins and or or lakes most important point to note is that these is the this is the most abundant of all the sediments most abundant of all the sediments okay color it is of red color gray color and black color red color is due to oxidation of iron fe2o3 iron bound up as sulfides or silicate gives a gives the gray color okay iron sulfide fes or fes2 black is unoxidized carbon which is actually black in color okay as you can see as we can also see in the coal and peat so this black color is due to unoxidized carbon all right so this is the this this was the classification of uh, clastic sedimentary rocks okay so this is for this lecture and uh, we'll continue with our permeability and porosity difference between them and uh, a stable isotope in the upcoming lectures of sedimentary geology okay thank you bye for now subscribe to know your planet better